Welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to cover bipolar disorder and lithium management. It's a relatively common MRCGP AKT topic, whether it's covering the psychiatry aspect or even the pharmacology aspect. Bipolar disorder has a lifetime prevalence of around 2%, typically starting in late teen years, and it's characterised by episodes of mania, or hypomania, alongside episodes of depression. We can categorise bipolar disorder into two distinct types. Type 1, the more common type, where it's mania and depression, and type 2, which encompasses hypomania and depression. We can determine whether a patient has harmania or hypomania by looking in detail at a few features. Both are related to an elevation in mood, but with mania, it's defined where there is significant functional impairment or if there's presence of psychotic symptoms for at least seven days. These would classically include auditory hallucinations or the hallmark, delusions of grandeur. Hypomania, on the other hand, is an impairment of function for at least four days in the absence of psychotic symptoms. When we refer to management, psychological interventions have a big role to play. We also need to care for comorbidities, as patients with bipolar disorder have a significant increased risk of diabetes, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease and COPD. We then look to focus upon the symptoms. So when referring to the management of mania, antipsychotic therapy is often considered as well as stopping any antidepressants. In the management of the depression section, then psychological intervention is considered, as well as antidepressants, usually starting with fluoxetine. The cornerstone of treatment, however, involves lithium, which is the mood stabiliser of choice. It has an extremely narrow therapeutic range between 0.4 and 1.0 millimoles per litre, but has a very long half-life, as well as being excreted in the kidneys. You will need to be familiar with lithium monitoring for exams and for your career, but in general terms, lithium levels should be taken 12 hours post the administration of the last dose. Once lithium is initiated, levels should be checked every week until levels are stable and in range, and levels thereafter should be checked every three months. If there is a dose change, however, then levels should be checked again weekly until levels are stable and in range. Additionally, thyroid function and renal function needs to be monitored at least every six months with patients given an alert card and a record card. Some of the more common side effects of lithium include GI upset, a fine tremor, renal dysfunction such as polyuria or nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, hypothyroidism, weight gain, calcium metabolism dysfunction, and ECG changes such as T-wave inversion. However, as mentioned, due to the very narrow therapeutic window, lithium toxicity is relatively common, typically in levels above 1.5 millimoles per litre. This is usually worsened when patients are dehydrated or significantly unwell, such as in renal failure or sepsis, or when renal function is reduced iatrogenically, typically through drugs interfering with the kidneys, such as diuretics, thiazides, ACE inhibitors and NSAIDs. When a patient is lithium toxic, however, they'll often have a coarse tremor, hyperreflexia, polyuria and neurological changes including confusion, seizures and a reduced GCS. Generally speaking, however, treatment is usually supportive, with volume repletion used in patients with mild symptoms, but hemodialysis considered in severe cases, with or without the use of sodium bicarbonate. Well, that's that. I hope you've enjoyed this very brief video on bipolar disorder and lithium management. If you did like the video, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment below. Head over to our Facebook page, as well as our Instagram page, at dorky underscore docs, where there's loads of ongoing revision content. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.